Hello guys, Julia here from English Prep Class. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. My name is Juliet. I'm a person face of English Tutor. And all I do here is to teach you tips, tricks and strategies on how you can pass your person face of English. Now today I'm in a park. I'm actually in a very good mood today. Um, I'm doing this video because I got some questions from some students and recently on what do they need to do before they go write the PT exam. Maybe a few days or like one day to the exam. So you can see I'm in a park. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So in today's video, I'll basically be telling you what you need to do so that you can ace your PSN test of English if you have just a few days or one day left to the exam. The first thing you're going to be doing is make sure you have understood what is expected of you in the exam. Understand the exam structure. Understand those parts that are very important. You know, when we come to the speaking module, which is the first module in the PTE exam, you, there are five stars, but of all those five stars, they are all not important. Two of them are the most important. That's where the speaking score lies. And not just that, you can also see those two stars contributing scores across the reading module and the listening module. And those stars are no other stars than the read aloud and the repeat sentence. These two stars can be a game changer in your PTE reading and listening scores. Okay, so know the task in each module that can help you boost your score. When you come to the writing, those two tasks in the writing, which are the summarize it in test and the write essay, will not just give you all the marks you need. If, if you're looking for 50, if you're looking for 65, or if you're looking for 79, summarize it in test and write essay will give you all those scores. Yeah, so writing will depend heavily on PTE reading and PTE listening. So uh, don't spend too much time trying to memorize how to write an essay. Just understand how to go about it. But don't spend all your time trying to um, make sure you, you crack the essay template and all that. You only, the essay gives you only 15 marks in your PTE writing. And guess what? Usually they give just one of these stars, but they will say one or two. But most times, I've only seen just very few students that had two of those stars to do on their exam day. Now, when it comes to the third task or the third module in the PTE uh, exam, we have the PTE reading. Now, this PTE reading has five tasks, but those five tasks are not all important. Like the multiple choice questions are not so important um, compared, compared to the reading and writing fill in the blanks or the reading fill in the blanks. Now, if you want to get from 79 upwards, like 79 to 90, then take serious the other paragraph as an inclusive of the uh, reading and writing fill in the blanks and the reading fill in the blanks. Remember, if you want to ace your PTE reading, remember the read aloud from the speaking module will contribute between 20 to 25 marks or even 20 to 30 marks to your PTE reading. So that task must be taken seriously. Then when you add the read aloud to the reading and writing fill in the blanks and the reading fill in the blanks, then you'll be sure to ace your reading score. If you also want to boost your reading score, there's a task in the listening module which is highlight incorrect words and also highlight incorrect summary to contribute scores to your PTE reading. Now this takes me to the last module in the PTE which is the PTE listening. Now there are eight tasks in the PTE listening but eight of them are not so important. I'm going to be telling you about the four most important tasks in the PTE listening that you need to take more seriously like the summarized spoken test, the listening fill in the blanks, um, highlight incorrect words and write from dictation. Write from dictation is a very, very, very important task. It's an essential task in the PTE. You have about three or four of that task on exam day. Please take it seriously. Now, when you know this task that can help boost your score in the PTE exam, the next thing you need to take cognizance of is time management. Time management is very important in the PTE exam. Yeah, because if you do not manage your time very well, especially in the PTE reading and in the PTE listening, then you would not get very good scores in those modules. Now for the PTE speaking and the PTE writing, that the first session of the exam, the computer kind of manages your time for you, okay? But when it gets to the PTE reading, if you want to spend 20 minutes trying to figure out the reading and writing fill in the blanks, then just know that your time will be exhausted and you won't have finished the PTE reading. And it can even eat into your time to go into the listening or it might just take you into the listening and you'll be struggling to know what to do, especially when the audio starts for summarized spoken tests. Yeah, so you need to manage your time. Time management is very, very essential. Another thing you also need to take cognizance of is your spelling. 
Spelling is very important in the PTE. Remember, when you write your essay, spelling is one of the things you're being graded for. Also, when you do the um, summarized spoken test and um, the fill in the blanks, even write from dictation, if you do not spell correctly, you'll be losing scores. Or if you do not take cognizance of the words that are used in, either in their past tense form, maybe they say something like walked and you wrote walk. Once you do that, you're going to be losing scores. I hope my voice is loud enough. Okay, now you have to listen very attentively to know when you're supposed to use the past tense of words or when you're supposed to use the plural forms of words or the singular forms of words. Now these are very important things you need to take note of. Alright, so one other important question I want to respond to here is, Julia, what if I do not know the answers to the multiple choice questions or the select missing word or the highlight correct summary? My response is this, please. Do not waste time there. Just choose any answer that looks like it and go on to the next task. Remember, in the PTE listing, you have to manage your time yourself. So when you come to the multiple choice question, without multiple choice, choose multiple answers, multiple choice, choose single answers, or the select missing word. What you need to do is um, just spend just one minute there. Once the audio finishes, just click on next. That's the next question. This means that while the audio is reading, you should try as much as possible to get the answer from the audio. If you are not able to get the answers for those other tasks, just click on anything that looks like the answer. So you go to the next task. Where you're supposed to spend time should be in the in tasks like the right from dictation. You have three or four of those kind of tasks on exam day. Now, if you miss one full sentence, you can't get plus 79. If you miss two full sentences of the right from dictation, you can't even get 65. To show you how important that task is, that task alone can contribute over 40 marks to your PTE writing. That task is the task that makes your PTE writing score important, okay? So you must make sure that you do not waste time on other tasks. That's what I would say. Don't spend time there, just go on, okay? Another thing I would also add to is for your um, uh, means of identification, make sure that the night before your exam, you put your international passport in your belonging, or your pack bag, or your purse, anything you want to go to the exam with. Make sure you pack it the night before your exam. Make sure you have your international passport there with you. I don't know what means of identification they use or they require in other countries. But here in Australia, you would require your international passport. And your international passport shouldn't have expired. Your international passport should be up to date because that is what you present to the um, officers at the place or test administrators, sorry, at the PTE center where you're supposed to write your exam. And once the um, international passport is expired, I don't think you'll be allowed to write the PTE exam. Okay? So it's important to go with your international passport. Pack it the night before, before so that you don't forget it. Because if you do, you will not be able to write your exam. Okay? So these are the things I wish you know. Then you know what? Have a very good sleep before you go for your exam. Rest. You know why? Because when you go into the exam, remember first of all, it's a computer-based exam. Now, if you do not rest, there's a tendency that you'll be feeling a bit of fatigue, a bit of being tired in that example. So I would say to you, try to rest. Get enough rest on the night to your exam so that you'll be looking all fresh and all ready to do your exam. For me, I'm a morning person. I like to take my exams in the morning. But there are some people, I've met some students that told me that they prefer doing the exam in the afternoon or in the evening. Now, whichever way works for you. But just make sure you get enough rest before you go into that example. And do not wait for the computer to take, to take you to the next task when you finish your speaking, any of the tasks in the speaking module. Once you finish reading, just click on next. Once you finish reading, click on next. Do not spend so much time trying to read the computer to take you to the next task. Now, these are the things I wish to tell you if you're preparing to write your PTE exam. Remember um, to subscribe to this channel. Consider subscribing if you're new here. Remember to like this video. Remember to leave your comments. Ask any question in the comment section and I'll be sure to respond to you. I'll see you in my next video. All the best in your PTE exam. Bye!